the creature total of a time when humans and forest spirits lived in harmony. A tale from an age before kings walk on the earth. But a cruel chieftain had betrayed their trust, and a sorceress laid a curse. Once upon a time in Oka painted kingdom of Ife, nestled amidst rolling hills and whispering palm trees, there lived a princess named Funge. Her beauty was like the first sunrise, breathtaking and radiant. Suitors from distant kingdom flocked to her father's court, bearing ivory dogs beaded necklaces and songs of adoration but Funge, the vibrant princess refused them all the whispers rippled through the palace like a startled flock of weaver beds why does the princess reject such noble offers the queen mother fretted wringing her hands what flaw does she find in men so brave and strong? In Adewale, his voice worn like the smooth stones of the Ocean River, struck his salt and pepper beer. A princess must choose with wisdom, not just haste, he would say, but his eyes held a flicker of concern. Funke overheard their worries. Her heart was a drumbeat of cute and an even stronger secret determination. You see, she carried a hidden oath, a burden forged in childhood. Years ago, when she was but a maiden, Funke had discovered a clearing deep in the royal forest. It shimmered with wild flowers and the emerald eyes of dating lizard. Here, sunlight felt like a blessing, and a waterfall tumbled over most covered rock. Its music as sweet as honey. One afternoon, drawn by a hunting bird song. Funke straight further than before. Deep within the glad, she spied a creature unlike any she had ever seen. It resembled a man, yet his skin was scarred like a pangolin and iridescent wings sprouted from his shoulder. His eyes were pools of liquid gold filled with an ancient etching sorrow. Terror and wonder warred within Funke. Before she could move, the creature spoke, his voice a melody of rustling leaves. Please do not fear me, princess. Slowly, Funke approached. Who? What are you? She stammered. I am a spirit of this forest, he said, his voice lays with a deep melancholy, bound here by a promise broken long ago. The creature told her of a time when humans and forest spirits lived in harmony, a tale from an age before kings walk on the earth, but a cruel chieftain had betrayed their trust, and a sorceress laid a curse. The spirit now existed as being in between, tied to the land they once shed. Each full moon, the forest spirit mourned, I must witness the echoes of the betrayal, or heartbreak anew.
tears welled in Funke's eyes. If only I could help. The spirit golden eyes held hers. Perhaps one day a woman of courage could break this curse. But the path is very lost and full of sacrifice. Young Funke did not hesitate. I swear, she declared, a small voice echoing in the glad. I will find a way to free you. I vow that I will never belong to any man until this curse is broken. The spirit regarded her with a pregnant mix of hope and pity. You are a kind soul, princess. May the ancestors guide you. From that day, Funke became a woman haunted by two worlds, the vibrant palace life and the whispering secret of the forest. She studied crumbling scrolls, sought advice from grizzled hunters, and learned the language of moonlight and bird song. The suitors came, warriors with lion hearts, poets with tongues sweeter than Shukagin, and princes who promised her half their land. Funke would listen patiently, admire their bravery or wit, but her answer was always the same. My heart, she would gently tell each one belongs elsewhere. The whispers around her grew harsher. Ungrateful, some muttered. She shamed our kingdom. Others pitied her, calling her mad, claiming her enchantment was her own stubborn pride. None but the soft-eyed king seemed to suspect there was more to her refusals. One morning, an elder from a distant village arrived at the palace. He was wizened as an old tortoise, and his eyes crackled with a sharp light. I have heard of the princess who denied suitors, he told the king. She carried a heavy burden. Perhaps I can help. Funke was summoned. A step heavy. The elder observed her keenly. Child, there is a knot in your spirit, like a tangled vine. It chokes your joy. Tears stung Funke's eyes, but she held them back. The elder was right. Her secret oath had bound her, turning her very existence into a quest. If your path is pure, the elder continued, then follow it with courage. But know that even the wisest of us must ask for help sometimes. The elder's word resonated within Funke like a strong gong. While determined, she had felt desperately alone. She sought him the next day in his simple hut in the outskirts of the village. You spoke of help. She began, a voice barely louder than a butterfly's wings beat. Can you aid me in finding a way to break the curse on the forest spirit? The elders with that face creased into a thoughtful smile. The path is indeed perilous, princess. But you are not as alone as you believe. There is a woman who dwells in the heart of the great savannah. She is called Iya Abba, the old mother. Her wisdom rivals the Moabab's age, but she never leaves a hidden place. How can she help me? Funge asks, a pause quickening with newfound hope. 
Ia Abba is a spirit whisperer. She can commune with beings unseen. Perhaps she holds the key to breaking the curse. A journey Punke's determination ignited. She had never ventured beyond a prosperous kingdom, and the thought of the vast wild savannah both thrilled and terrified her. King Adewale, concerned but trusting, provided her with the strongest guard, a seasoned guide, and supplies for the odious trick. The cross rivers, steaming with crocodiles, trek beneath the relentless sun and sheltered in caves where the night creatures howled. Punke marveled at the changing landscapes, but her mind raised with the promise of Iya Abba. The journey itself became a form of preparation. Each hardship strengthening her resolve. Her guide, a grizzled trader named Babatunde, began to look upon the princess with newfound respect. He saw beyond her royal attire to the unwavering spirit within. You are a child of Ife, he told her one night by the campfire. But you have the heart of a lioness. Finally, they reached the edge of the great savannah. Grass stretched like an endless sea, broken by only shallowty of acacia tree. Here, the sun felt fiercer, and a booze with the unseen and a strange scent of anticipation greeted them all. They followed Babatunde's instinct and cryptic clues, searching for days. Funke's strength began to waver. Was this a fool's errand? Yet, just as doubt threatened to consume her, they stumbled upon a place unlike any other. The savannah seemed to bow in reference, parting to reveal a circle of ancient standing stones. At the center grew a single moabab tree, its enormous trunk resembling an elephant's height, its branches reaching like arms to the heavens. We go no further, Babatunde declared. A tremor in his usually groove voice. This is the dwelling place of Iya Abba. Funke's heart pounded like a war drum, with her guard waiting anxiously at the edge of the circle. She stepped forward alone. Silence descended, broken only by the rusting of leaves in a wind that seemed to emanate from the tree itself. Iya Abba, Funke called, a voice trembling slightly. I have sought you, crossing rivers and plains. Please help me. No answer came, only the gentling swaying of the Moabab's branches. Funke sat cross legged beneath the ancient tree waiting. She waited as the sun deep below the horizon, waited as the moon bathed the stone in an ethereal glow, waited until her eyes lit threatened to betray her. Suddenly, a voice whispered within her mind, old feminine and as soft as moonlight, child of the forest, vow, I know you are hot. Funke jolted, scanning the shadows, but there was no one. Who, how, the tree have ears, the stones have eyes. The voice continued, 
You are sorrow a goat across the land. Tell me, princess, what price have you for compassion? Overcome, Fungi poured out a tell. The forest spirit, her childhood oath, the scorn she endured with each word, the weight upon her eased slightly, shade with this unseen presence. You are strong and kind. Ya Abba spoke within her mind. But the forest spirit cause is old and potent. To break it, you must walk the spirit path itself. Are you prepared for this? Funke hesitated. She had dreamed of this moment. But now the full magnitude of it struck her. What must I do? A single leaf shaped like a hat drifted from the Moabab and landed in Funke's palm. When the moon is full, return to the forest of your vow. Crush this leaf, mix it with water from the waterfall and drink. The voice instructed, you will sleep, you will dream, and you will walk between walls. Funkes left Iyaaba's domain, armed with a new purpose, a step lighter, and her spirit stilled. Upon her return to Ife, she was greeted with a mix of joy and exasperation. King Adewale's relief at her safe return was tempered by his frustration with her continued quest. However, Funke was emboldened by her encounter. The path was clear now, however dangerous. She waited for the full moon, her anticipation a storm within her. Finally, the night arrived. Under the watchful gas of her king father, Funke slipped away, returning to the glad bath in silvery light. She crushed the heart shaped leaf, mixed it as instructed, and drank the strange shimmering portion. A tremor ran through her body, and overwhelming weariness watched over her, and then darkness. Funke's eyes fluttered open, but her world was shrouded in mist. The familiar forest pulsed with an unworldly glow. The flowers seemed to whisper, their scent now sharp and heady. The waterfall rumbled, not with her water, but with a sound like a thousand distant voices. Fear tightened in her chest like a python's coil. Yet, a deeper instinct, a strange yearning, pulled her forward. She followed a path that seemed to materialize before her feet, winding deeper into the heart of the woods. As she walked, the mist swelled revealing figures veiled in shadow. They moved with a mournful, freckling grace. Funke recognized them. The forest spirits, their golden eyes were pools of endless sorrow, reflecting a world just beyond sight. Her heart ached for them, but she did not reach out. She knew that in this spirit realm, a mortal touch could be harmful. She simply walked amongst them, sharing their space, acknowledging their existence. Suddenly, the mist ahead thickened, taking on the shape of a chieftain, proud and arrogant. Beside him cowered a woman in shimmering robes. 
a sorceress. Funke's pulse quickened. This was the betrayer, playing out anew each full moon, eternally tormenting the bound spirit. The chieftain uttered words she could not understand, dark promises twisting in the air. The sorceress raised her hand, and the wave of crackling energy erupted. The spirit around Funke cried out, not in sounds, but in a vibration that shook her very being. Rage ignited within Funke, hot and fierce. How could any being inflict such pain? Stop! She screamed, the word resounding through the mist. Time seemed to freeze. The chieftain and sorceress turned their spectral eyes fixed upon her. The ground beneath her feet felt unsteady, threatening to resolve into nothingness. I will not allow this, she cried again. Her voice held a strength she never knew she possessed. A tremor ran through the spirit realm. The mist began to churn. The chieftain's image wavered. He opened his mouth as if to speak, but no sound came forth. The bound spirit stayed, their golden eyes blessing with a flicker of hope. Then, with a sigh, like the rustling of a thousand ancient leaves. The scene dissipated. The mist swelled around Funke, blinding and disorienting her. She stumbled and fell, her world fading to black once more. When Funke awoke, the sun dappled the forest floor as it always had. Bed song sounded sweet and normal, a stark contrast to the haunting echoes of her dream journey. Slowly, she stood, every muscle, her heart pounding with mixed dread and exhilaration. She had done it. She had walked the spirit path, witnessed their pain, and somehow, however briefly, her presence had disrupted the curse's power. A tremor of joy rippled through her. Yet, as she made her way back to the clearing, she knew it was not over. She could feel a residue of the old magic, thin but still clinging to the forest. Back at the palace, Funke found King Adewale waiting anxiously. When she recounted her experience, his face held a mixture of awe and paternal concern. My daughter, he said, taking her hand in his, you have showed that more than any princess should. This time, when Funke spoke, her voice held certainty one in the spirit realm. Father, there is more to be done. The cause is weakened. But the forest spirits are not yet free. The next full moon will be the key. The king understood his daughter possessed knowledge he could not. He summoned his wisest advisors, skilled hunters, and even priests from surrounding kingdoms. Together, they consulted ancient texts and listened to the whispers of the wind. When the full moon rose, Funke, accompanied by her father, a small band of chosen warriors, and the village elders, returned to the forest. The elders had discovered a ritual half forgotten in time, an offering meant to appease restless spirits. 
they brought honeycomb their sweetness a tribute to the forest bounty a bowl of pure spring water a symbol of cleansing together they performed the age old ritual their voices weaving with the rustling leaves and the waterfalls eternal song as the final incantation left her lips a change swept through the glaring the aid drum with an expectant energy the ground itself seemed to exhale releasing a weight carried for centuries suddenly the forest spirit shimmered into full view their scarlet skin glowed their wings unfold in all their iridescent glory the golden pools of their eyes once filled with sorrow now brim with a heartbreaking gratitude the forest spirit who had spoken to funke so long ago step forward you have released us princess he said his voice no longer won a good of sadness but rich with a vibrant new life our eternal torment has ended one by one the spirit bowed to funge then with a shimmering rush of wings they ascended into the moonlit sky their forms dissolving into stardust tears of joy streamed from funke's face her oath the burden she carried for so long was lightened the vibrant princess so often misunderstood had become a savior as they trek back the forest itself seemed to celebrate bird song rang sweeter sunlight seemed brighter and a gentle breeze carried the scent of wild flower a blessing upon the princess path back in ife the kingdom rejoiced shooters once again flocked to the palace but this time funke held her head high she could now choose not if she ever could but to whom she would give her heart and so the princess who refused suitors became the princess who found love on her own terms the princess who saved an enchanted forest her tale became legend whispered among the market stalls carried on the river priest and sung by sterling at twin light a testament of courage compassion and the secret oath that shape our destinies thank you very much for viewing please subscribe to our channel to have access to more beautiful stories like this